Let's start our first session with a prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, guide us and bless us through your word as we learn more about the scriptures, the basic doctrine of Christianity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this is our inaugural post for Reformation Seminary. And this is our seven o'clock time. And I was thinking as I waited and listened to the beautiful organ music that it might work out a lot better during the day because a number of people are home during the day or have access during the day. Well, at the end of the day, we're rushed, you have to do this or that. And um, also, we already have some things that get lined up in the evening. And I do most of my writing work in the morning. So I thought it would be pretty easy to set up a, a morning time. And then the people later on in the afternoon, the evening, wanted to go through the, the newest or previous ones that are YouTubed, then they could do that. So that was a thought. You might want to consider that. I've mentioned uh, more about having biblical doctrine lessons. And one person said, why not a seminary? And I thought about it and said, but we have to share Zoom webinars. And that has to work. And I have to be able to save it. Well, we got through those, and the easiest part is saving and uploading it to YouTube. So here we are with the first session. I'm going to have an outline each time, which is a guide posted in advance, and the talk will stop at 30 minutes. I'm getting a little echo effect, I think, because I let too many doors stay open, but uh, I'm not going to change it right now. You let me know if you, you hear that. So I'm always going to limit the talk to 30 minutes. Could be shorter, not longer. We could have discussions too. Let me check something. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I'd have to go to this that I can see. Yeah, we have a number of people here. I can only tell from the actual picture that you're seeing. And I'm reading off of the, uh, the blog, okay? So, first thing we're going to talk about is the foundational concept of the Bible, the efficacy of the Word. And that is the Holy Spirit at work in the Word and the sacraments. The problem with dogmatic books is that they tend to multiply themselves, and they promote battles, one against the other. There's been a lot of that in the past. It doesn't mean uh, dogmatics is bad by itself, but what people need to do is to study the scriptures and start with them as the foundation. I was thinking, you know, if we want to reach up something tall, like uh, I've got a curtain bar behind me, am I going to do it on a folding chair? No. I'm going to have to get a good solid ladder. And people have the New Testament in mind as the most important part of the, about the Bible, but the foundation is the Old Testament. And the foundation for the whole Bible is the efficacy of the word. Now, Adolf Heineke was a Wisconsin Synod professor, brilliant man, and he wrote a dogmatics, which is very much biblical doctrine. And he has this saying in it, which is very good. The word 
never without the spirit and the spirit never without the word. That is sound doctrine. That's more like the German Reformation. I'm going to change something here. Whoops. You can tell me if it made a difference that I shut the door most of the way. Okay, so first understanding about the Reformation is the title of the seminary. And that's because, as Chemnitz pointed out, Martin Chemnitz, that the Reformation does not include Zwingli and Calvin. It does not include what happened in England after Henry VIII changed his mind about things or anywhere else. The Reformation is limited to Germany and these three great figures, uh, figures who uh, also had other associates with them. The three main ones are Luther, Melanchthon, and Chemnitz. They are truly the ones who established this and others went their own ways in various ways. And sometimes they acknowledge the fact that these three men were giants. In fact, Melanchthon was so uh, well-known and appreciated that every king wanted to have Melanchthon as the court expert, but he chose to stay with Luther. And I like what Martin Chemnitz said about the other groups and their claims in Switzerland, England, and so forth. He said, um, and then those very people saying they were with Luther, as Calvin claimed, Zwingli, pretty much, if they were with Luther, and yet they really weren't. They became very antagonistic. And Kevin has said, it's just like the landlord hears that the renters don't like what they've got. And they won't be happy until they tell the landlords, the Reformation, how to change what they teach from the scriptures. Well, I think that's a funny analogy. Love it, because I've been a renter for at least 20 years in a row. And I, I know there's a difference between being a renter and a landlord. I'm very nice to my landlord and have had good results from that, too. And so, Reformation is a very important word. Luther was the foundation, and that was the result of many years of monastic work and serving as a priest. And whole background that he had trained him in Roman Catholic dogma, and that's why he had to reject it. Because when they made him a doctor of scriptures, he got his PhD in the scriptures, and by studying them so carefully, he realized what the errors were, and there were many other things involved in that too. Melanchthon was younger. Both of them lived to be 63 years old. So Luther was born in 1483 and died in 1546. Melanchthon was born in 1497 and died in 1560. I don't, I don't know the dates for, for Chemnitz. But he's a fascinating person because he studied under both men. And so he had, uh, to a great extent, the uh, spirit and the capacity of both men. And so I don't think most Lutheran groups or seminaries pay any attention to him. I really don't. Maybe a little bit, but not much. And the only thing I've heard was derogatory. For instance, and back in the old LCA days, oh, well, the trouble with Martin Chemnitz is he took the Bible too literally. And at least Luther wasn't like that. And I read that and I thought, these people are sniffing airplane glue. But 
We know uh, Chemnitz through his great works, the examination of the Council of Trent, which looks big and heavy, is a fantastic book because he had a great sense of humor. And that comes through in all his writing. And he was the chief person in charge of the Book of Concord, which is, of course, harmony of the Lutherans with the scriptures and defending everything by the scriptures. They certainly quote other people, but the Book of Concord is all scripture based. So, what we're going to talk about today, and I've talked about it before, is efficacy. And it's always in the medical news. I read that because of nutrition. And when they talk about a drug or a procedure, they talk about the efficacy of it. Does it work? And that's the great irony of this, because the Greek word, and it's used in different ways, for efficacy is energon, energy. It means it works in, it works. And it's, <laughs> and so this is what is taught so clearly in the Reformation and not today. People have abandoned that concept to such an extent that uh, many people have told me that was the first time they ever heard of such a word reading what I posted or what I talked about. So it's extremely important because it's throughout the Bible. Now, uh, one thing to take note of, and uh, I'll try to do some of this, um, you know, making it a little fancier uh, to show this, that bunch of stuff to put together. Let's take some passages, 1 Corinthians 16, 9. These are all KJV. For a great and effectual is opened unto me and many adversaries. Okay? A great door and effectual. So he's saying an effectual door. What would an effectual door be? The gospel word had moved people to make this possible. And it also created adversaries. I've noticed that too. So there's a different uh, translation for that word and variations of that word. So you have to kind of look for them and uh, it helps to know Greek, but uh, I'll try to uh, underline them and so forth uh, in the future when I do that. Here's a Philemon 1.6, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Well, that's a way of saying that the word of God, when taught and preached, has had an effect on these people. And it's all come through through the word and because of Christ Jesus. Now, here's one that you can't miss. Sometimes uh, effectual is uh, powerful. For the uh, Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the jo joints and marrow and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God is powerful. What's lacking today? I'll tell you what's lacking, lacking today, faith in Jesus Christ. And what's also lacking is the answer to this. What is effective in your parish, district, synod, missionary work? It's the word of God joined with the Holy Spirit. If people don't know that, and if they don't teach it, they will not be effective in God's own word. Business theories are not efficacious in the scripture. Fun stuff like having Kool-Aid and pop and coffee, would you like it with cream during the church and eating popcorn? One person said to me, you have to be there to understand how awful it is 
to hear people crunching popcorn during the church prayer. Well, of course it attracts people. But eventually, if all these places have popcorn, soda, coffee, cream and sugar, there won't be any faith left at all. Because the people with this attitude as pastors are also delivering nothing but sweetness, junk food, entertainment, and so forth. Okay. So sometimes the word group, it's really a group of words, uh, includes operations and working. 1 Corinthians 12, 6. And there are diversities of operations. There are various ways God's word is effective. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. See, so it's operations and working. Those are parallel based upon the same word. The Bible, God's own word, likes to repeat words just so we get them better. And the genius of the KJV is these great geniuses knew how to study the scriptures and provide the best English possible for that time. Here's Mark 6.14. And King Herod heard, for his name was spread abroad, and he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. And that's using uh, works. And that, this is a... This is a strange verse. I had to look it up again. And uh, the point of it was uh, using works in that sense. Romans 7, 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So the scriptures are saying here that effectiveness can also mean effective in doing the wrong things. If you live by the law, the fruit of it will be fruit unto death. That's what I mean. I mean by to the law, that making the law your gospel. And that's a big problem, especially under the influence of certain groups. 1 Corinthians 12, 6, there are diversities of operations diversities of ways to be effective. But it's the same God which worketh all in all. The scriptures, they have this tied up just in 10 examples, and there are many more. We're not going to do all of them tonight. But in many, we can see that this is a harmony within all of the scriptures. And that makes it so wonderful. And how did I run into this? Well, actually, I remember one uh, bishop or district president. This was LCA. He was Danish, and he was also liberal, an activist. But he said to the whole group of pastors, he says, well, you know, the only way to get anything accomplished is through the word. It's the word alone. Yeah, that summarized it. And of course, some people are like that because they were, they were uh, radicals from graduating from seminary and all that sort of thing. And I never heard another church official say such a thing. And so the more people seem to contradict the scriptures and Christianity, the more I looked up things and I thought, I think efficacy is the key here. And so that's what started thy strong word, made people very upset. Here's also another negative uh, sense, 2 Corinthians 4.12, so then death worketh in us, but life in you. And this is more obvious, Galatians 2.8, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty, in me toward the Gentiles. So he was saying, if Peter was effective, I am effective to the Gentiles. They too can be believers in the gospel. In Galatians uh, 3.5, he that 
ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. You see, it worketh miracles. I'm going to stop at that point and not give you 150 verses, although I do have them somewhere. <laughs> but uh, this is saying what people have to realize is God's word always accomplishes his purpose. It never fails. Therefore, when people say something like, well, you know, you won't get that many people. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? When God's word goes out, we never know where it's going to stop. Absolutely no way. So, for example, one of our good friends, a conservative Lutheran, says she gives the books that we produce to her doctor, who is a Methodist, and he's very interested in reading those things. Now, I never say, Jenny, would you straighten out that doctor so he knows more about the Christian faith? No, oh, I don't even know who the doctor is. I never knew anything about it until today. That is how the word travels. And that's why I thought blogging could be very important because it reaches everywhere. And we don't use any secrets to keep people away from reading, but we do in the sermon, you know, in the blog, and so forth. And that has to be the attitude of every person, parish, and organization that God's word, the gospel, is always in league with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is never apart from that effective work. So, for the last 10 minutes, we'll talk a little bit about that because it's not just the word effective that's important. We know that, don't we? And a lot of what this is, I would say, is this. That... We start to know because we've heard the hymns, sung the hymns, read the scriptures, heard the scriptures and the prayers that, yeah, this is there. It's there throughout the Bible. And it's wonderful to have uh, the effect of opposition giving us the energy, the efficacy to bring this to light. Okay, I'm going to get the parallel here. We're going to talk about Genesis 1 and John 1. Getting very close to that now. We're at Malachi, Matthew. If I get to Mark, Luke, and John, where'd go? These pages are a little bit together, very thin. Why am I going past? Because I have big fat fingers. Okay. Well, here's the parallel. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. We know this is the creation. Is the Son of God there? Of course, because why would God make a command to nobody? Or if he did, he'd say, I'm going to create light. But no, he's issuing a command to the Word, the Logos. And God said, let there be light, there was light. Notice the parallel in John 1, which is a commentary on Genesis 1. In the beginning was the Word. Some might think, well, we have the scriptures were in the beginning. No, it's the Son of God as the Word. And 
the word, the son of God was with God and the son of God was God. So we have a Trinitarian explanation of the father, the son and the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit in the creation? Yes, it says the Holy Spirit hovered over creation during this time. And of course, the Holy Spirit is the very thing, the energy, the person who teaches us about God the Father and God the Son. When people tell me that there's not very much about the Spirit in, say, the New Testament or some, some kind of strange idea like that, I have to say, well, you know, I've said that in Old Testament class about the Spirit, Old Testament, and so forth, that it's all through. You just start looking, and it's everywhere, okay? The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That means that the Son of God, the Logos, created everything in the entire universe. No evolution, creation by the Logos. So that is even more powerful than what we see just in verses, because it is a declaration of everything around us. Everything we could possibly know is from Jesus, the Son of God, the Lord of creation. And knowing this and believing this, there is nothing that keeps us from God's own household, his comfort, his peace, the everlasting life that comes from faith in the Savior. And that's the point where we're going to stop today. I might be short on 30 minutes, but I'm not going to be long. I am not sure how this is going to work. But it is possible for people to talk. I've got a little thing that says chat. I'll see if I can just make it chat. No, that's a written chat. Mm, webinar chat. Well, okay. Why don't we do this? If you want to chat on the webinar and you see that little uh, chat button, just try that. Try it asking a question or saying when is the next one or is it raining there too say anything you want on the chat we might have to all get used to that i've got little buttons and devices the stock market has upcoming turning uh earnings i didn't didn't participate in that so i'm gonna have to fight find out about how we do this better and um, I'll close it for tonight with a prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together and having the technology that we can reach around the world in teaching your word and understanding and appreciating our Savior, our good shepherd, who guides us and protects us. In his name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to turn this off. It will convert. And then I do a few things to make it convert to YouTube. And that will be on the front page, Ichabod, and also on the Reformation Seminary page. That will be identical. Very easy to do that. God's blessings to you. And I appreciate you coming. Or should I say listening and watching?